So with new vaccine mandates coming into effect at workplaces, experts say we may see job terminations over this contentious issue in the next few months. Not to mention thousands of Ontarians still temporarily laid off may no longer want to wait to be called back to work. Now this means we could soon see a flood of job hunters, people who will be accepting new offers of employment. It raises a lot of questions. So what should you look for if a new employment agreement letter is put down in front of you. Joining us now to answer some of these questions, employment lawyer Lior Samfuro. Lior, always great to see you. Let's talk about employment agreements. Uh, a couple different scenarios. If you're looking for a job and if you have one, what should you do if you receive one once you start a new job? Well, first of all, we have to understand that the employment agreement is one of the most important documents you are ever going to sign. If you think about this, Anthony, we all spend most of our waking hours at work, and the employment agreement is the agreement that governs that situation. It can be with us for many hours every day, and it can even be with us after employment comes to an end. But I'm going to share something that a lot of people may not understand, and that is an employment agreement generally, that 10-page that document that you're looking at when you get a new job, generally benefits the employer. The law provides for some very good extensive protections that are available to employees. They're there whether you know it or not. What an employment agreement can do is often take away some of these protections and employees may not understand that. So for an employer, you are very wise to use a comprehensive employment agreement. It's going to give you flexibility. It's going to allow you to do a lot of things that you need to do in the workplace. For an employee, you are actually better off not having signed an employment agreement. Sign it or take a job on a handshake, something on the back of a napkin, that is actually better than an employment agreement. But if you sign one, you have to be very careful with what you agree to. Okay, so when it comes to what you could agree to, a lot of people don't know and they just think, look, I want to do something. I don't want to create any rifts before I even start the job. You're talking about salary, vacation, sick days, for example. That would be part of it, but is that it or what else should they be looking for there's a lot more important terms than just what is your salary for example an employment agreement may try to limit a future a, a person's severance entitlements their future severance entitlements that could cost you tens of thousands even hundreds of thousands of dollars an employment agreement can also say that your job can be changed for any reason, that your compensation can be changed, that if you stop working, you can't work in the industry for many years. So those are all terms that are problematic. And let's combine them. If you sign an agreement that says your employment can be let go at any time, if that happens, you get very little. Oh, and by the way, then you can't work in the industry for two years. Do you only care then about the salary? So you have to be very careful as to what you agree to. So how much leverage does an employee have, or maybe even a future employee in this context? How much negotiating power do they have? So, you know, a lot of employees say, okay, finally, or you've convinced me that I need to be very careful here and, and that I, I need to negotiate, but can I negotiate because I want the job? The reality is that you can. You do have some leverage. You have your skill, your experience. So here's a few thoughts. First of all, remember, if you don't ask, you won't receive. You have to make some, some demands or some requests, and oftentimes employers are going to be quite cooperative. Second, narrow down the demands to maybe two or three. If you go to your employer with a long laundry list of demands, they'll uh, be turned off, they'll think you don't want the job. So narrow it down. And finally, if all else fails, you can agree now to renegotiate at some point in the future. Perhaps when you meet a milestone, maybe you've had your one year anniversary, you've proved your worth, an employer at that point may be willing to change some of the terms in the agreement in your favor. Look, it clears up a lot of questions people have, and I know there are so many more out there. We appreciate all your time and your insight, as always, Lior. That is employment lawyer Lior Samfiro. Thank you again.